Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello, teacher. Hello, students. Welcome to today's lesson on the life cycle of HIV. In our last lesson, we discussed the structure and function of the HIV virus. We began by reviewing the term retrovirus and explained how the HIV virus works to infect T helper cells in the body. We also labeled a diagram of an HIV viron with the correct terms for each of the structures. Today, we are going to discuss the life cycle of the HIV virus. We are going to look at how it enters a cell, multiplies, and eventually leads to the cause of AIDS. This is going to be a very informative lesson. Students, I hope you are ready to begin. Let us start by reviewing the function of T helper cells. We know that T helper cells carry CD4 receptor on their surface. Students, based on what we learned in our last lesson on the structure and function of HIV, can you explain the role of CD4 receptors in the immune system? Discuss this with a partner. <laughs> Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin.
Time's up. Let's get back to our lesson. Hello again, everyone. I hope you were able to recall some of the information we previously learned. T helper cells are helper cells. They initiate the body's response to invading microorganisms such as viruses. T helper cells are the host cells in which HIV multiplies. HIV attaches to CD4 receptors and enters the cell, destroying the ability to fend off pathogenic microorganisms. The fewer functioning T helper cells, the weaker the immune system, and therefore the more vulnerable a person is to infections and illnesses. In our last lesson, we discussed that T helper cells carry CD4 receptors on their surfaces. T helper cells are the target of the HIV virus. As we learned, other types of cells carry CD4 receptors, but T helper cells are the most important cells in the body because they control the immune system. If their activity is damaged, the body's response to infections by other organisms is severely affected. Let us continue on to discuss how HIV reproduces in the cell. Once HIV has attached to the CD4 receptors on the surface of a T helper cell, it combines with the plasma membrane. Attachment is a specific binding process between proteins on the surface of the virus and proteins on the surface of the T helper cell. After attachment is complete, viral penetration occurs. Penetration allows the RNA and the reverse transcriptase of the virus to be injected directly into the host cell's cytoplasm. As we know, GP120 contains three glycoproteins and once GP120 attaches itself to CD4 receptors, these three proteins spread apart. This allows the GP41 protein, which is normally hidden by the GP120 proteins, to become exposed and bind to the receptor on the T helper cell. Once this has occurred, the HIV viron envelope and the cell membrane are brought into direct contact and fuse into each other. Once HIV has penetrated the cell membrane, it is ready to release its RNA into the cell. The viral RNA is protected in the nucleocapsid. The nucleocapsid needs to be dissolved so that the virus's RNA can be converted into DNA. This is a necessary step if the genetic material of HIV is to be incorporated into the genetic core of the T cell. The reverse transcriptase changes the RNA into DNA using building blocks called nucleotides, which are provided by the cell. The DNA that is produced becomes incorporated into the host cell's own DNA. 
The viral DNA is also transcribed to viral RNA. The viral RNA produces viral proteins, including the enzyme reverse transcriptase. Next, the RNA, proteins, and reverse transcriptase molecules are assembled by the cell into new HIV particles that leave the cell by budding from the cell membrane. This is called chronic release. Once the HIV particles leave the initial host cell, they go on to infect other T helper cells within the body. We sure have covered a lot of information so far. Let us do an activity to summarize the steps of the reproductive cycle of the HIV virus. On a sheet of paper, do your best to explain the six steps we just covered. You may begin now. Students, let's get ready. Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. I hope this activity was a good way to review what we just learned. Let us go through the steps together. First, 
the HIV viron attaches to the plasma membrane of the T helper cell once it has connected with the CD4 receptors. The HIV releases RNA and the reverse transcriptase enzyme into the host cell. In the second step, the reverse transcriptase converts RNA into DNA. In the third step, the viral DNA incorporates into the DNA of the host cell. Now, the HIV is said to enter a period of latency. In the fourth step, the viral DNA is transcribed into RNA. The RNA produces viral proteins, including the reverse transcriptase. In the fifth step, the RNA, proteins, and reverse transcriptase molecules are assembled into new HIV particles that bud out of the host cell through the membrane. In the sixth step, the virus leaves the cell and goes on to infect other T helper cells in the body. Were you able to write down all six steps? Great work, students. It is important to review this process to ensure that you are familiar with all the steps. There are some HIV proteins that stay on the surface of the infected T helper cell. The immune system can recognize these cells as pathogens and destroy them. The cycle of infection, reproduction, and destruction of infected cells repeats itself for as long as the body can replace the CD4 receptors lymphocytes. The latency period is the name for the time when the body replaces the CD4 receptors lymphocytes at the same pace as they are being produced. This period can last for many years. When the body is unable to keep up with the cycle of replacing the CD4 receptors lymphocytes, the virus will start to take over and infect more CD4 receptors of T helper cells. The number of T cells will severely decrease, which means the immune system will be unable to function effectively. Therefore, many other infections may occur, such as pneumonia, tuberculosis, and forms of cancer, leading to the onset of AIDS. This brings us to the end of our lesson. Today, we learned about the life cycle of HIV. We discussed the role of CD4 receptors in the immune system, and we explained the six steps involved in the reproductive cycle of the HIV virus. Until next time, Thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.